Throughout the history of agriculture in Malawi, sorghum production has been a passive agrarian activity. However, in most African agrarian communities, sorghum is a significant crop as it is considered to be a food crop. In this project, we would like to find means of uh, improving productivity of sorghum in Malawi, which is, uh, which is low. Uh, nationally, uh, the estimates indicate that um, um, on a hectare, farmers currently are getting about uh, 600 kilograms of sorghum grain. The yield potential of sorghum goes up to 8 tons um, per hectare. That's what we would like to do, raise the productivity of sorghum uh, from uh, uh, 0.6 of a ton to some decent levels, uh, maybe uh, going above three tons per hectare. That would be quite an achievement. This year, we were taught to plant sorghum on all the plots. This year we are trying to come up with the right amount of fertilizer for soga. In my observation, plots that have done well are those that were intercropped with legumes last year, and yet this year we also applied fertilizer. I would say that intercropping with application of good amount of fertilizer is the efficient cropping system. As a drought tolerant and airy maturing crop, sorghum stands out to be the most reliable crop for food security in the face of global climate change. Again, its nutrient value has not been fully discovered by most farmers in agrarian communities across landlocked countries, including Malawi. The productivity of sorghum has been low as compared to other crops, regardless of its potential to stand out as both a subsistence and commercial crop. As an annual crop, sorghum has been considered as a side crop characterized with low yield, regardless of its potentials to produce better yield, even in drought-prone areas in the country. The sorghum crop is different from other crops like maize. Sorghum can thrive in sunny weather as compared to maize. Sorghum can still do well even with heavy rains than maize. Thanks to the agricultural researchers scientists that have taken an innovative path to improving the sorghum crop and shape its use in Malawi through the Sorghum Productivity Improvement Project. The project started in 2020 and is expected to run through 2024 has so far reached its midpoint in the cycle of its intervention. It's not like we have come to a conclusion. It's a process. When dealing with uh, improving productivity, we have to look at uh, several issues. The project is cosated within the agricultural research stations of Chitala in Salima, Vumbo in Blantai, and Kasintula in Chikwawa through extension planning areas within the agricultural development divisions. The implementation of the project activities in the previous cropping seasons have been supported by African Plant Nutrition Institute, APNI, under the Phosphorus Fellowship, One Planet Fellowship, the African Women in Agricultural Research and Development Award, the Ministry of Agriculture in Malawi, and the Norwegian Agency for International Cooperation and Quality Enhancement in Higher Education, DIKU, in Norway. This station is Star Research Station. It is in Salima district. We research on a raw altitude areas. This station do research a number of crops like sorghum as well as cowpea, pigeon pea, maize. 
to my side, mostly I do two things, maize breeding and the sorghum. We have started this project in 2020. This is the second phase of the project. So last year, 2020 to 2021, phase one was done pure stand, but we applied fertilizer, and the second one we applied fertilizer with manure. And the other problem was just pigeon bees and sorghum intercropping, and we intercropped with the cow bees and sorghum. And there is a pure stand for cow bees as well. That one for cow bees was meant to be incorporated the next season. Sorghum productivity improvement brings together the farmer's experience and the researcher's experience to enhance the productivity of sorghum. For many years, farmers have followed traditional agrarian practices, which has left the productivity of sorghum challenged. By far, the project is set to establish a number of cropping systems that are crucial in sorghum farming. project we employed a double legume intercrop involving the pigeon pea and the cow pea in rotation with soga as the principal intervention. Uh, in the first season we started with uh, an intercrop system involving the pigeon pea and the cow pea. We had uh, uh, other monocultures of these legumes uh, as well as a monoculture of uh, uh, the soga. Uh, so that we have a comparative basis as we, uh, we get along. But also we had plots that were treated with a combination of uh, mineral fertilizer and manure for the sorghum crop in the first season. And so we are progressing. The first cropping season, intercropping was introduced as a cropping system that combined sorghum, pigeon peas and cow peas with an aim to incorporate biomass into the soils. In the previous cropping season, the cropping systems were changed to try another set of cropping systems by cropping sorghum only and use of fertilizer with different amounts applied on the same plots. Through this cropping system, the scientists aim at establishing the right amounts of fertilizers required for sorghum to produce the optimal yield. In this season, all the plots have been planted with uh, sorghum, as you can see all around. Sorghum, and then um, we are testing different levels of uh, the application of uh, nitrogen as well as phosphorus, so that we get to measure uh, which of the levels would be appropriate for farmers to use. Because currently in Malawi, we do not have clear uh, soil fertility management protocols uh, or procedures uh, for the sorghum crop. And so we'd like to derive guidelines on how we should manage soil fertility in sorghum so that farmers get to optimize the productivity of the crop in the face of climate change. We applied different amounts of fertilizers to different plots. We even had other plots that were not fertilized. There is a difference in the yield. The plots with good amounts of fertilizer have produced higher yield compared to those that had minimal amounts. Whereas those plots with no fertilizer have produced poorly. Last season, I obtained a good yield of sorghum as compared to this season. The challenge was that the rain stopped soon after planting and this affected the sorghum performance. However, we won't give up. We will continue to work hard and we are going to plant sorghum again next season. This growing season of sorghum 
with differentiated plots that were applied with fertilizer and some that were not. We also wanted to observe the effects of the amount of fertilizers on soca. We have seen that plots with fertilizers and good amounts have done better than those that had less amount or no fertilizers applied, as is visibly indicated from the field tags. We have seen how the applied amounts have affected the crop yield. We can say that it is very wise to apply fertilizers to sorghum. The Sorghum Project is designed to build a resilient farmer community and enhance the capacity to produce sorghum as a pathway to adapt to climate change and its impact. Yeah, sorghum is um, climate smart because it's able to adapt to different stresses. Whether they be a lot of rain, whether they be a scarcity of rain, sorghum is able to adapt and then produce. That's the year season, I would say that uh, we had very few bad experiences and the, based on the treatments that we conducted, in fact in terms of yield, the crop did well. As compared to last season, this year uh, we encountered a prolonged dry spell soon after planting and the, the planting was done in November and the, soon after emergency we encountered a, a prolonged dry spell which he extended up to sometime in January, mainly at the end of December. From experience, we have noted that uh, um, sorghum, when it has just emerged, uh, within those early days, it has to be supported with the ample moisture. Now that after emergency, there was a, a prolonged dry spell. Um, our plant population was reduced somehow because of the wilting and drying of some of the plant, plants that emerged. And the, that one also affected the application of the fertilizers because uh, we are supposed to apply the fertilizer immediately after two weeks or within a period of two weeks after emergence. And uh, that one was uh, obstructed because of the dry the dry spell. The sorghum production um, is essential to this area, mostly based on the experiences that we experience in this area. As the global population continues to increase, the planet Earth is experiencing a potential threat of food insecurity. Nonetheless, our question is, how well is the agrarian community prepared to meet the future? What we are trying to advocate to the farmers is that they should try as much as possible to embark on sorghum production. Because after the four years of this study, we want to come up with the, the right levels of fertilizer application in combination with the um, legume uh, rotation with soga. And for us to come to a point whereby we are certain that look, this is uh, what we would uh, recommend that farmers should do in order to achieve, you know, optimal yield of soga, um, would require two more cropping seasons. So this is uh, the second uh, cropping season and uh, the journey continues until we get to the fourth cropping season. That's when we are going to uh, really come up with um, yeah, uh, you know, recommendations to say, all right, uh, in terms of uh, managing soil fertility, this is what farmers ought to do so that they get the best out of uh, you know, sorghum farm. The sorghum project is not only a capacity building project, it is also an innovative approach to climate change using a variety of cropping systems, patterns and combinations for best results. In its trial phase, the project is engaging lead and baby farmers to embrace the innovative knowledge that would be shared to the rest of the agrarian community. 
tuli mu program ama bila koma no chaka cha taji tinapanga tinadzala mabila ao koma mikisana mabipena ati madzala bandi ina madzansola ndi nandolo pena ati madzala nsolo koka pena ati madzano mabilo koka the previous cropping season, we practiced intercropping, where we intercropped sorghum, pigeon peas, as well as cow peas. This cropping season, we have planted sorghum on a pure stand, and we applied different fertilizer with different amounts, with an aim to see required amount of fertilizer for optimum yield. Unfortunately, rain stopped when we had just planted, and this affected our sorghum. This has affected my family because when we harvest sorghum, we are assured of food security. However, this season, we are worried. Because of the drought, maize did not perform well, and the yield was very poor compared to sorghum. For the time being, we, as sorghum farmers, have food. We will not stop sorghum farming because this is the crop that thrives in different climate conditions. <laughs> As a scientific study and innovative intervention, sorghum productivity improvement is not implemented in isolation of the local farmers in Malawi. Being the innovation to challenge climate change phenomena and its possible impacts. Farmers in the project have understood the relevance of the project as a resilient pathway to adapt to climate change and droughts that are continually emerging. <laughs> The project is helping farmers understand the best and complex cropping systems in a more simplistic manner than it would have been if such innovative green practices had not been introduced. In Malawi, the majority of farmers rely on rain-fed production. Inadequate innovative means of production have greatly challenged their means of survival. However, on the other side of the coin, Farmers are challenged with other unprecedented events such as rival parasitic plants that destroy their yield as well as wild birds. The sorghum grain at its maturity stage becomes attractive to wild birds and this results in yield damage. Possibly this is a situation manageable by farmers. Farmers got their sorghum to protect it from wild birds. Additionally, farmers use various techniques to free away the birds. Birds are attracted to sorghum. For this sorghum to look this fair, I have been guarding it from the wild beds for 28 days, from sunrise to sunset. In Chikwawa, farmers have attested the impact of witch wheat, which often results from monocropping, and this has significantly affected the yield. This is witch wheat, one of the plants that is challenging our crops especially sorghum and maize. Once they pop up in the fields, we know that a farmer is at loss and no hope for the crops. We don't know how to deal with this palazetic plant, and if at all, we have a better remedy for this plant. Could intercropping as one innovative agrarian practices help farmers deal with such a precedent? Or perhaps the recipe to deal with such untold experiences lies with the Sorghum Productivity Improvement Project. The project, however, is an ongoing exercise such that a conclusion cannot be drawn from the results seen so far. Nonetheless, its significance has taken shape. <laughs>